Today, we will be taking a look at cut off and walk behind pavement saws. But first, take a look at this. It was curiosity that prompted a Lorraine couple to look through the tape from their home surveillance video camera to see why the work at the end of their driveway wasn't finished. They saw the worker who was using a giant saw to cut out the patch of road that was being replaced. Then they saw the saw come off, shoot across the driveway, then the lawn, and actually into the house next door, which had been vacant for a year, leaving a two and a half to three foot gash in it. On the video, the worker looks to see if anyone else saw this, retrieved the blade, reattached it, finished the cut, and took off. The neighbor who captured the video and city officials, well, they're just thankful no one was hurt. That's certainly something we don't want to see happen. There are a number of safety considerations in operating these types of saws. Not only do saw operators need to know how to properly use the blade, they also need to be aware of health aspects. The worker in this photo was exposed to respiral dust levels that was more than 45 times the NIOSH recommended exposure level. That after being monitored for only a half of a work shift. Dry cutting the pavement also exposed the workers in the area to excessive levels of silica. Incidents like we just saw are avoidable. With us today are Josh Restless, Safety Director with KS Energy Services, and Eric Ahmet and Dan Esch from Esch Construction Supply to take a look at the safe operation on concrete and cutoff saws. One topic we take very seriously and pass on to our customers is the topic of saw and blade safety. Using a cutoff saw can be dangerous, but can also be a safe piece of equipment when educated and trained properly. When it comes to handheld cutoff saws, kickback is probably the most serious concern. Kickback occurs when the material being cut is not properly supported and the operator is not using the proper technique. We have seen several injuries over the last several years, and in one case in New Richmond, Wisconsin, we saw a death due to kickback from a handheld cutoff saw. We have also seen several injuries with segments that have come off of the steel core of a diamond blade. In one case, there was an operator who was not using a guard, and the segment came off and hit him in the neck. That scenario reminds us why it is critical that the guard needs to be in great shape. It shouldn't have cracks, it shouldn't be modified at all, and it absolutely must always be used. Keeping your equipment in shape is necessary to the success of the cut and the safe operation. One of the things we see commonly is flanges that are excessively worn. Flanges help to support the diamond blade so the cut is straight and the blade turns straight. When flanges get worn they become extremely sharp and can cut the operator when they're changing blades. Also as they get worn they get smaller and they no longer support the blade properly. Another important thing to always check is the arbor nut. We saw the video clip earlier with the runaway saw blade that came off of a concrete saw. That was the result of an arbor nut not being tightened properly. Before you fire up your saw, you need to inspect the saw and the blade to help prevent injury to you, your coworkers, or innocent bystanders. The most common problems you want to look out for are segment loss, which is caused by changing the direction of the cut during the cut, cracked segment, caused by excessive cutting pressure, overheating, caused by not providing adequate coolant or not step cutting, cracked core in the gullet caused by the blade being too hard for the material being cut, breakout caused by continual use of a blade with a cracked core, and undercutting caused by cutting through the pavement into the abrasive substrate. It's also imperative that we're wearing the proper personal protective equipment or PPE. You always want to protect the eyes with safety glasses in addition to a shield. You should also be wearing hearing protectors, a respirator to protect the lungs from silica, and non-slip gloves to ensure that you have a good handle on the saw. In the event you are sawing into heavy steel and exposed to a lot of sparks, it is a best practice to wear chaps to prevent your clothes from catching on fire. Again, using your cutoff saw is a reliable and safe way of getting things done when trained on proper technique. A cutoff saw is not a toy that should not be handed out to new employees without proper education and review of technique. Some examples of good technique. Number one, hold the saw firmly with both hands. Number two, put your left hand on the front handle 
with your elbow locked and your right hand on the rear handle and throttle trigger. Number three, never stand in direct line with the blade or bend over the blade. Number four, make sure you have good footing and balance and are standing on stable pavement or stable soils. Number five, always cut with the lower quadrant of the blade to avoid reactional force kickback. And number six, proper support of the material is critical. For more in-depth training on saws and blades, please contact us at eshsupply.com slash safety training. Our national office has developed information on worker exposure to silica. Without proper engineering controls, workers can be exposed to harmful levels of respirable crystalline silica that can cause silicosis, lung cancer, and other lung diseases. Applying water to a saw blade when cutting materials that contain crystalline silica substantially reduces the amount of dust created while cutting. This past year, OSHA proposed a new silica standard which reduces the permissible exposure level to silica that a worker can be exposed to. You can find more information about this standard on our webpage at www.osha.gov. Also, on the OSHA webpage, we provide a variety of resources related to silica safety. Through an alliance OSHA has with the Concrete Sawing and Drilling Association, best practice sheets have been developed on reducing silica exposure and highway work zone safety. In addition, on the back side of that sheet, you will find a sample traffic control plan which replicates information found in the Manual for Uniform traffic control devices for temporary work zones. In closing, we'd like to thank Diggers Hotline, the Wisconsin Department of Safety and Professional Services, Etch Construction Supply, and KS Energy Services for making this video possible. I'm Mark Heisel, and I thank you very much for attending today's meeting.